What it is, what's up? I got the wrong intro in the cut. Uh, Bitches from Heaven back with another Jolene video. And uh, we really had a, a, a bevy and wealth of good content coming in this series in the past few, as if Hirohiko or Rocky ever misses. Um, but we saw a character, and you know, spoiler alert, um, but the point being, Kato uh, has come back. Uh, we have all Higashikatas that are living in the estate currently. Toru is seemingly trying to fuse with her body to get her body parts uh, using a perfect Rokakaka. We're just at a good spot. I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, Berserk's Mangaka. Um, just wanted to say that. I believe it's pronounced Mir Mirror. Mirror or something like that. Um, you yeah, RP him. And uh, let's get right into it. This is for heaven. Um... Mother, I don't remember if we've seen her stand before. I don't believe we have. Um, but grandmother, that might be her stand. It might just be, you know, her title. She is a grandmother. Um, shot by Joe Skate Soap Bubble. Toru has been left in a desperate state. I just ate noodles before I did this, so I'm a little bit gassy, I suppose. You what? Uh, I would love to see his color. I they had they had in the uh, let me. God, I hope I don't spoil myself. I'm, I'm looking away. I'm looking away. How many pages is this? Holy shit! Um, I, I right click you, son of a bitch. God damn, I'm, I'm a fucking moron. All right. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Uh, Soft and wet go beyond the um, new, pretty much, um, what's the word they use in Jojolian to, or Jojo to represent stands and abilities that have their own power? Um, autonomous. And autonomous power, soft and wet go beyond, appears to be that. And because autonomous, I think that's how it, this is how, this is how I rationalized in the previous chapter. That is how I suppose it beats the, the destiny and the pursuing. Um, Inca no Mezumi Potatoes. What does that mean? Is that her standing? Oh, it's a type of potato. A potato brand. You peel and cut that variety of potatoes if you deep... Oh, wait, hold up. I just... <laughs> I just realized you guys can't see me. Holy shit. Um... Will that work? Let's see. Oh wait, I can do this. Uh, this. This. Yeah, there we go. Holy shit! I didn't realize you guys couldn't see me until this this fucking point right here. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> we're back. Um, you feel like cut that right? You, if you deep fry them straight, and there's nothing we missed, by the way. I mean, it's just some, you know, like two pages. Um. So what's interesting, God, her titties, holy shit, I see where, uh, I can't make that joke. <laughs> I don't think she's 18. Um, anyway, the, <laughs> good genetics, I suppose. Uh, if you deep fry them straight into cooking oil without any batter, you don't boil the Inca and no mesomaze. Once the deep frying is done, you toss it to a stew. That is the recipe I use for when I make cream stew. Is she gonna, like, throw Toro into a fucking stew? Is that what she's saying? Oh, so that's why she came over coincidentally. Okay. It's my son's favorite yesterday, Joe told me. Ooh. Kato is building up to a fucking ass kicking right here. Toru is it, he's doing like that kind of eye thing that is done in anime where like the eyes start whitening out when like one's about to die. So and Toru is pretty close to death. You gotta look. I know Yasuho is supposed to be um, the part 8 version partially of Koichi, but her mannerisms really is just like so similar to him. Not like one to one, but like so so much speaking. I just like hear her now just like yelling at this like in a very shrill tone, like just so overbearing and somehow even more brazy than the scene calls for. And this is a pretty brazy scene. Daya and uh, Hado. Hado number 90. 
<laughs> Hot on number nine and cursing. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't read Bleach, man, or watched Bleach, you need to read Bleach or watch it ASAP. No Rocky. Watch Kato just like literally as Yasuo said, Kato could just like close the door on him, and he's fucked. Like there's nothing he can do. Motherfucker's like a broke ass like arm and shit. <laughs> Why is he even bothering to threaten her? Just touch her. Memories, memories of the. Why is he pantomiming and, and fucking dialoguing uh, at this very moment? Even fucking soliloquy. <laughs> memories of the landscape from these scenic cliffs. Clear skies, rainbows after storms, mist, the beacons of lighthouses, migratory birds and gulls, linear plants. It, it really is interesting the dialogue in, in JoJo Bling. That's so like, <laughs> even I guess JoJo in large, like this dialogue that happens in between a fight is just like, what the hell is happening right now that you don't get out of any of the series without his desires ever coming true? He's trying to bait her to pursue him, I suppose. Is this her stand? Space trucking. Okay, is that a, is that a band? I know everything's like a musical reference. Is that a band? Is there really a band called Space Trucking? It, a, it could be a song, I suppose, um, or an album. That is my stand's name. Uh, my card's ability. A <laughs> one-way ticket to hell. That's hey, that's a reference too. Hey, Gashi Kata Kato Sam. Motherfucker's good at baiting. I think she's gonna flip it on him, but that's a monotonous voice for your eldest son, Hilton Satan. But you're telling me you're currently present your heart from also he's still in love. The man's talking cash shit right now. Can hide things in a sp see I, the one thing that kills me about Iraqi and his his damn stands is that sometimes the way he explains them makes no not I won't say makes no sense, but it's just so hard to interpret. And sometimes I guess it's because it, lo it gets lost in literal interpretation between Japan to, to English. But space trucking can hide things in the space between a car and another, which is kind of what I derive from from things there. Um, I guess what's supposed to be happening here is that the saw is literally, because it's showing a falling down motion, it's literally being taken into the space between the two cards as far as this goes i don't know what was being hidden but okay let's just keep on going uh <laughs> joe shoot <laughs> oh shit wonder of you oh no he's back <laughs> do you want to touch me i guess he pursues on he would pursue her at that point so Calamity didn't get to her? It doesn't count? Is that not... I mean, that... What? What the... Wait, okay. Just, just keep an open mind. Just keep on reading. Because he is... He's neutral right now. He's passive. I heard about how his branches grace didn't until that part of platform for my son, Joe, and I already know about it. How does she already know about that? Can you tell me how to rock you? I know she looks a lot. God, them titties. Holy shit. Um, she has no will to attack. I mean, how do you derive? Okay, so you mean to tell me that as long as... Has there been a precursor to this? Like a situation to which someone just simply wanted to explain how shit worked to Toru and didn't count as attacking him? I don't understand. I mean, at this point, he's going to kill him. Like, if he can't move, he's going to die. They have, I, I guess, Toru essentially being the narrator here, or vessel vessel for the author. Kano's the main villain would be a little bit of a twist. I, I know some people kind of hypothesize that, but it would be a little bit of a twist. What is it? Is that is that Jesus? Is, is that the, the holy corpse? <laughs> what is it? Is that a book? I thought it was a bullet for a second. What the hell is it? It looks like keys to a shackle or keys to a cuffs. Oh, is it a button to like a, a shirt button? A shirt clip? A shirt button? A shirt button? Okay. <laughs> cuffs. Cuffs. That's what you call those cuffs. Okay. Yeah. That was very difficult. Not like, I don't, I've never seen buttons like that before, but it was very difficult to get shirt cuffs in by yourself. A little bit of exposition, so I'll just shut the fuck up for a second. I just. 
I, I'm, I was on the phone with uh, an elder for a minute and I had to teach him some ropes um, and I just did not feel like doing the live reformat anymore. And unfortunately, I got missed pretty much the main part of, of this, this chapter. So essentially, Araki finally wrote, uh, not, I won't say finally, but he, he wrote exposition behind why um, Kato knew of the Rokakaka and how it worked and yada yada and even in saying that towards the end we see how Jobin who has historically been kind of a father's boy worked under in a rather conflicting, conflicting manner but worked under the direction and the guise of his father uh, how he kind of came to have the steel foundation that he had in operating with the Rokakaka some of the conviction he's had and some of the things he's done to maintain that conviction um it came from his, his mother. His mother pretty much told him what he's been beating the drum on from the jump. That this this plant is everything for us. This is how we break the curse. And going along with that, um, we see at a certain point. So you have the the full potted plant. Um, and yeah, she's teaching and talking about the equivalent exchange. And then Kato with her kind of... A uh, funny Valentine S type stand. She puts a couple of cards down and takes about one fourth of the potted plant between some uh, of her cards. As Jobin was asking, where should I hide this at? One fourth of the potted plant is hidden behind or between the cards. So we get back to the present day where something was shown in the cars and as you get closer it looks like fingers which is not obviously a tree um or plant i should say so she while still not attacking she reveals the curse and god those tits holy shit i'm gonna see the thumbnail right there um and a hand pops out and we have a pretty much what appears to be damn near dead uh, Tsurugi Higashikata who whose hand touches the uh, Rokakaka active Toru and Toru starts doing an equivalent exchange with Tsurugi uh, there was an intention from the jump it appears um, Kato pulled a fast one and now we go to the final panel where uh, the head doctor appears to be. This is, I think this is the hole uh, that was due to uh, go beyond. But I, my first interpretation was: is it just him breaking apart? But I think it's just the the missing hole from uh, go beyond, and we just see Toru slowly being pulled into Surugi. Now, I'm on, I was on the auspices initially that the way this worked was the person who eats the fruit has the ability to di dictate like, what is taking, how it's taken. But I guess because Toru kind of had the mindset already, like, I'm going to touch somebody, I'm going to get their being, uh, he's already active. And he, I guess, wasn't able to turn it off quick enough to when Tsurugi went out to touch him. So, he's exchanging with Tsurugi, but I think kind of like with um, Hash Vault from Bleach, his balance technique, essentially the way balance works is the person who's the worst off gets the high ground after he uses his, um, his shrift. A shrift being a power that is an ability from a Quincy in Bleach. So Hash Vault he used it on Uryu when he was worse off, and Uryu took his damage. This is our first time, I think, seeing someone who is actually better off using the equivalent exchange and taking the brunt of the... I'd soon take the brunt of the damage from the fucked up person. Uh, when you think about Joseph Fume, you think about Joshu, they were all giving. And I guess in this instance, in a sense... Tsurugi will be taking. So yeah, that's about it. Um, we have a situation where it's 
I guess virtually explain how Surugi came to be. Uh, we have Akado who would do everything for her son and for the family, kind of the same mold of Jobin. Uh, we have more Rokakaka. We have able bodies. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I believe Jobin actually was alive back in the flashback. Everything centers back to the flashback. But we have a reference to memories. Um, maybe the prevailing theory of Surugi using her power to take everybody's memory is wrong. Maybe there's some other stand that takes memories. Maybe everybody's okay just because everybody's back to normal. I mean, it, I think they have some way of getting Joshu back. I would think that similar to Jobin, that Hado is going to, or Kado is going to side against Yasuho. So maybe they'll use equivalent exchange to fuck her up and give her body back to either Jobin or Joshu, possibly. But that's just pantomiming and expectation. Expectation. Is that a word? Expectation? Uh, spectating right now. But as we know, uh, it definitely appears that Toru is going to lose uh, due to the equivalent exchange. Is it permanent? Is he the last rock villain? I would think so, just with how close we are to the, what appears to be a deadline. But I think it's also safe to say the final villain won't be Toru. I think there's still a, a little bit more to go to the finish line. And we're almost there. Hope you all enjoyed this uh, fucked up format. Uh, hopefully it's cleaner next time. I just want to get this done. Uh, and I think that I did. Uh, peace. <laughs>